Okay, um, well, welcome to uh, math modeling. Uh, my name is Radu Kaskaval. I'm faculty in the math department, and um, I'm glad to see some of you that I know, and I'm anxious to see, to learn, to meet everybody else. Um, so, let's see. Um, I'm going to start with a few uh, things about the course, general things. Um, and uh, then hopefully quickly start um, talking about you know what uh, math modeling is and uh, how do we um, you know why, why do we learn it um, I have a website that um, I'm going to post everything pertinent to the course um, there's also going to be a, a lecture uh, archive, so the video of the, of the course, uh, as well as the notes. So uh, hopefully you're going to have everything, you know, in your hands and um, to succeed. Um, I want to say a few words about the syllabus. Um, so Everybody got a, a copy. Um, so there's going to be a required textbook. I want to uh, make this clear. Um, that is the uh, third edition of uh, Mearshart. Um, in addition, um, I list, I think, two other or maybe three other courses, three other books. Actually, two only. Um, that I will use sort of um, during the semester to you know bring more examples or more problems um, now they're not required in the sense that you can actually download them for free um, chapter by chapter and I don't know if you're familiar with this um, Springer website that you can download um, you have to be on the campus network, um, but if you are, or if you're at home and you VPN, then I think you can access these. So the first one is called Mathematical Modeling Case Studies and Projects. And again, if you don't see this recognized as, it means you're not on the, on the campus network. Okay. So if you're in Honolulu in spring break, um, make sure you need you need a chapter of this book. Uh, hopefully you won't, but make sure you can uh, you get to the um, you know VPN. Okay. So what you do here is you can actually uh, download chap individual chapters. So for instance, and uh, one thing that I should say is that you shouldn't rush immediately and download everything because I think this is here to stay for the semester. But uh, regardless, you can go and kind of browse. Uh, we're going to start talking today about optimization problems, but these problems do not actually um, apply yet. So we're not going to use it, but I just wanted to show you. Um, you can download these. And I don't know why this happens, but. Uh, because my browser doesn't like this. Eh, anyway, second time it works. I don't know why. Uh, but basically, you have you know the chapter in your hand, printed. Uh, keep it on your computer. If you print it, I recommend you take all the trees. So you print only like uh, double pa double sided, two pages or you know, four pages probably too too little, too small. Okay, so um, so that's about these books that I list here. I kind of looked for. Well, I, I specifically look for books that are not won't cost you anything. But the funny thing is about this first one is actually if you look through the format, I think it's like identical. They, the authors must have talked to each other with the the book that we use, or what's more likely is these people use this book. And then they came up with more examples. So 
anyway, so it's it's it will be ex ex almost identical. The other, the second book is um, again, it's in um, it's also free downloadable. Uh, you can also buy a copy. Um, the nice thing about this second book is you can, if you go here, um, some of these books on Springer Link, uh, you can actually buy a print copy for 25 bucks, 24.95, um, including shipping and handling. Anyway, so that's for convenience. This is not an advertisement for Springer Link, but I think it's extremely useful. Uh, but you can print, you know, again, chapter by chapter. Okay. And I should say the second one uh, contains some uh, some things that we're going to be talking about. Maybe more graduate students will will uh, use some some of the chapters. So we'll, we'll talk about this later. But anyway, so the important thing is we're going to use this, um, you know, um, extensively. So make sure you have a copy. And this is not free. I don't download, but anywhere. If you find it, lucky you. Um, okay. So, any questions about the textbook? No. Yes. Um, okay. Now, even on the front page, I kind of make this uh, clear that we're going to be using uh, computer software for solving this problem. So. Um, you probably know already. I mean, I'm, um, my preference is to use MATLAB. Um, so I'm going to be using MATLAB. Um, we, I don't uh, expect that you know you guys have had exposure to MATLAB. So um, we'll talk about a little bit about um, what it does and how you can use it. But it won't be the focus of this course. It won't be to um, become experts in MATLAB. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you um, basically the way we're going to use it is we're going to learn through examples. So I will uh, post things on the website. So here's one. I already posted like a first exercise, I mean example in the book. Um, so. I give you basically. I give you the code. What you need to learn is how to use it, how to modify it. Well, I mean, you have to learn how what it does and how to modify it. Okay. Um, never seen MATLAB before. This much looks strange. Okay. Uh, but that's how you, how you um, you know make the computer do what uh, what you want it to do. So I'll talk about the format. Uh, keep in mind. All it is is a text file, the text, but it has an extension .m. Okay, and uh, so anyway, so we'll um, we'll learn how to run it, how to you know modify it, and and uh, get the output. Um, I want to say from the beginning, so um, that once you uh, write a code, or you use my code, or you use a code, a MATLAB code. You run it. You can actually um, write a report, or you can write the code in a way that it gives you a report. So a report is in HTML format, or it can well then you can PDF it or whatever. Um, but that's sort of how I will expect the the, the um, part of the homework to be turned in. Okay. Um, and again, it's it will be really quick to, to explain these things. So I uh, just wanted to show you. Um, okay. Now here I talk about basically what um, what it is and why we use it. Um, uh, it is. F um, It is available for, for free in the computer labs. In fact, I think in all um, throughout campus now we have a site license, so it should be installed in the library when the new computers come, um, which should be convenient. Uh, you can also uh, access it remotely. How many of you have 
heard of remote access to okay so if you if you have not um, there is there are some instructions here how to get um, access to MATLAB remotely but again if it's if you're at a computer that has MATLAB installed you know that's that's all you, all you need um, well you for convenience uh, if you need it at home you can you can purchase it or, or on your laptops you can purchase a, a student version but uh, for most part you can do it on remotely or well for all, uh, you can do it remotely period or you can do it in a lab um, okay so I'm gonna um, make a plug for a course here that is kind of shameless advertisement um, if you pass this around so this is a syllabus for another course which uh, is not a required course is not a prerequisite to this course but it is it is a course that we offer it's a one credit hour course uh, math 265 and you probably got an email about this so um, the only thing I want to say is is um, got a quote from a student that took it last last year together uh, you know at the same time as math 448 and uh, that's that's what it is so if I could read it uh, it says I found the MATLAB course invaluable in taking modeling last year there are only a few of us from the modeling class that took the MATLAB course and we became the go-to go individuals in the modeling class um, for providing help to those that do not know MATLAB mathematical modeling is beep and I would highly recommend it that if a student does not know MATLAB they take math 265 um, the fact that it's a challenging course I live uh, this is a personal opinion so um, well everything is a person uh, opinion of this particular student and um, but the there is sort of a truth to this and I um, wanted to mention it here is that um, if you if you have never seen MATLAB or if maybe you've seen it but you'd really like something thank you uh, more systematic uh, we offer this course and uh, it is shortly before this class so um, anyway and and at the end of advertisement um, regardless I think the point the, the point that I want to make sort of from the beginning is um, it may not this class may not be the how you've you know done calculus or if you've done ODEs you know differential equations or linear algebra or whatnot uh, because it really requires that you use a computer I mean you cannot you cannot just sit with a uh, pen and pencil and uh, pe uh, pen and paper and um, and expect to to do it okay so um, if you're very proficient maybe in a different uh, language you know um, you can and say I'm totally against this this uh, you know software okay maybe you can go by you know the first few assignments but then it gets to a point where you know what I show you in MATLAB may not be you know easily doable in, an, in, a, in another language okay and then it becomes it, it becomes kind of difficult to communicate with each other, and it, and that's you know. Uh, or maybe at some point you decide, oh, I I can use three of them at the same time. Um, and that's fine. That's fine. But the point is, you want to make sure that you can communicate the out you know the outcome of your uh, work to me, and um, and I cannot use five different languages to to. To, to explain the same concept okay uh, the book actually does somehow if you read through the book it has an example in Mathematica an example in Maple and then an example in what not something derived which I honestly don't know much about it okay um, you will you will very soon I mean unless you're proficient in all of them you'll soon realize that okay well now what am I using to you know to solve a problem okay 
So please keep that in mind. Uh, if you have doubts, and you know, feel free to come talk to me or um, about this this aspect of the course. Okay. It's not like you, you sit, you know, somewhere and you take a derivative and set it equal to zero and you get the answer. I mean, or use your graphing calculator for this. Okay. Now that being said, <laughs> the choice that I made for MATLAB is is uh, is because. MATLAB is sort of the standard uh, software or language in this field. Okay, it's uh, it has evolved over the years. I mean, it was sort of started uh, by mathematicians, then the engineers picked it up uh, and they developed it a, lo a lot. Um, and in the past ten years, it came back with a lot of capabilities that that we need, as you know, in mathematics. Uh, one of them being symbolic computations. Okay, so we'll um, we'll talk about those. Um, but MATLAB is primarily used for numerical computations, that is, with numbers, rather than with symbols. Okay, so that kind of distinguishes uh, different computer algebra systems. Is is it really powerful in the symbolic computation world? By symbolic, I mean, what's the derivative of x squared? Well, a symbolic um, a software with symbolic uh, capabilities would tell you is 2x, right? Numerically, it's, well, you tell me the point where you want to take the derivative, and I'll tell you the number, right? So uh, it, it just takes a little bit of. Um, I mean, it, it, it makes a dis, 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 distinction, and um, for most of what we we need is numerical computations are are uh, are, are essential. Uh, certainly, symbolic are useful too. So, um, anyway, so that's sort of a reason behind MATLAB. Um, don't just say anything else. So you have everything printed there. Um, Oh, one thing on the home page here, I made uh, a link to a MATLAB resource page, which lists a bunch of things you can um, you can explore. I mean, you can do everything uh, nowadays. Pretty much, uh, you can find lots of resources, of free resources on the web. Uh, there are whole books. There are two books by uh, actually the. Inventor of MATLAB um, that uh, he made available online. Lots of codes. The best way to learn MATLAB is look at the code, see what it does, modify it. Okay. Uh, use the help. So I'll show you uh, in a second. Okay. So there are a bunch of tutorials. Um, maybe one that I found again the best way to learn is. Take the math to 65. Okay, you'll hear me uh, say this, uh, this this first two weeks uh, a lot. But um, short of that, there there are uh, again there are lots of them. Uh, MathWorks, who's the uh, company um, behind MATLAB, has lots a list of tons of tutorials, tons of video. You know, uh, I don't know how efficient they are. I mean. Certainly, you know, it depends on the personal taste, personal um, um, learning style. You can take advantage of one or the other. But uh, the one I found kind of useful is almost like a cheat sheet. Um, I must say that not, no, no single tutorial will actually uh, cover what you need. Okay. Um, that is to say, if you've done it, if you okay, you invested the time, you spend an hour, two, three, go through what, what the tutorial says. Um, and then, yes, I know it, right? So every, every time you kind of run into a math problem and you need to use something, there's probably something you need to learn about the computer uh, a function or, or some um, Okay, but 
just to give you this example is um, it goes through sort of how 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 to um, um, start you know how to uh, operate with MATLAB and other things. Um, I will show you a little bit of this myself without a formal tutorial. But again, if you if you need, um, we actually have even the UCCS uh, website has a few tutorials down here. The web is full of tutorials. I wouldn't recommend that you go and start hunting for the one that works for you. Uh, I mean, to spend uh, days and days and then uh, get frustrated. Um, there is uh, a huge resource this semester, um, a MATLAB tutor, uh, his name is Terry Spence, you might have known him, graduate, graduate student. Uh, he will be available 9 to 1 every day, actually. So if you need uh, questions about MATLAB, he's, and assuming he's available, uh, he'll answer them to you. Um, I was thinking to actually uh, block a few hours uh, of his time just to, you know, so you have sort of priority, but it's up to you. I mean, you're the drivers. Um, I would say see how it works. If you need, uh, you know, if it's extremely busy with other things, um, maybe we can block some of his time, but okay. Uh, so, so again, lots of resources. Um, in the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, you know, halfway in the in the course, if you, I mean, I, I just tell you this from experience of other students is, is if you uh, feel like, oh my gosh, it takes me, you know. Um, 50 hours a week to just do things that in this course, uh, something is not right. Okay, um, I mean we're not. As I said, I will give you the uh, kind of the sample codes. I'll give you the, you know, the codes that solve the problems we're talking about. Maybe in your homework, you're gonna have some change, something change, something uh, slightly different. You can, uh, I mean, you should be able to just modify it and do it and report and go go forward. Okay, the goal here is not to uh, learn the, everything in MATLAB. Okay, uh, and again, I'm, I'm I'm repeating myself, but um, the goal is to solve math problems and and math modeling problems um, and use it at some stage in that process. Use MATLAB in, in that uh, process. Okay. I miss anything. Um, I will post the homework here. So the first homework I say it's uh, due. Uh, it's going to be due next a week from today. So that means we have to start talking about something fairly soon um, in chapter one. So and um, I mentioned the exams. So there are going to be a midterm and a final. So that's. Um, and the graduate students, I think, will have some sort of project you know, on top of that. So I think it's all in the syllabus. The lectures are um, going to be available on the website here. If you're not familiar with this, um, first time you visit the lecture page, you might be asked to do something. But Well, okay, we know who to blame this, right? Anyway, um, you're probably familiar about the uh, the video archive page. And it should be also on iTunes, so um, anybody knows iTunes? <laughs> if you... Um, um, yeah. You can play with me. I mean, just um, no. But I mean, the, the the point is that you can subscribe to to the feed, sort of. So you get it downloads automatically on the computer. It's not perfect, but anyway. All right. So finally, so here um, you just uh, register if you've never done it before. Otherwise, just sign in with your name and email address. Okay. 
All right, I'm really done, I think. Um, any questions? Yes, no, none. Um, I have a tentative schedule here. It's it's kind of on the conservative side, but um, meaning that we might actually, we hopefully will be ahead of it, but if not, hopefully won't be too too much behind it. But um, but the important thing is to almost forget about that print copy of the syllabus and always refer to the website. Okay. So do this next time. Okay. All right. So let's. Um, no questions. Um. Sure. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, as long as you don't do other things with it, uh, that's fine. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I said it's not perfect. It's going to happen in a week or two. Yeah. So if we do go faster than this, would you move the midterm? Or is that set for that? Yeah, actually, I had it before spring break, but then. It's kind of said um, there might be a in class and a take home portion, so I'm am I'm, I'm saying you know the in class should be set, okay, and uh, um, so don't don't plan on not coming back from string break. It's, okay. Um, anything else? Yeah. Uh, homework is the same. Uh, project, so there's going to be a project that the grad students will have to do. And I did not, uh, I talked about it in the syllabus. I haven't uh, given the details yet. I will talk about this in the next two weeks, two weeks. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, I don't think so. Okay. I think you have to be enrolled in. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you're welcome to. Uh, um, so again, this is okay. So let me let me start talking about a little bit about the nature of this course, and then um, one thing that's nice about mo um, modeling is that it appeals to lot lots and lots of fields. Lots of lo I mean, it is sort of what math can do in all the all the science and all all the, all the fields, right? So probably some of you are not necessarily math majors. Um, and everywhere you go, you, you see, oh, I want a math model, right? So, uh, so you can be very powerful, of, you know, at the, well, not at the end of the course, but uh, if you become, if you have an expertise in modeling, um, you can, you know, have a career in it, right? Um, now, a course is not going to give you the full expertise, right? In fact, it's going to actually just prepare you or, or, or expose you to what it takes when you are in an environment where math modeling is required to actually do something, okay? So even though here we are, we're, we're working on baby models, baby, uh, I mean, in examples, textbook examples, right? That's how they say it, right? Um, we're not solving a problem that the company in Woodland Park would like uh, us to solve, right? Or some, you know, some very extremely concrete problem that if you solve it, you know, whether you solve it or not is depends on, your, on the existence of that company, right? So uh, we're, we're going to learn about um, aspects of, you know, what it takes to set up a model, what it takes to, um, you know, validate a model, what it takes to solve it, what, you know, uh, and actually what's extremely important is what it takes to communicate what you've done in the model 
we're the people that have no clue about mathematics. Okay? Um, so those are sort of the, the, the main goals. The examples we're going to cover, I mean, it's are, are, are by no means exhaustive. So uh, these other two kind of uh, resources that I gave, these two other books, just complement, you know, add to those uh, list of examples. But even those are not going to be comprehensive. So if, if you have an interest in some whatever, right, um, it would be actually nice, you know, certainly come talk to me. Um, See if, if if we have the tools, okay? If we or if we'll ever learn the tools for that particular situation, uh, we may not, right? So um, one other thing that I should say, like in both the the, the books that I mentioned, not the required one, uh, there are a lot of models that require partial differential equations, and you know many of you have not uh, you know taken those those courses. So, um, but but that certainly is opens up, you know, a huge uh, kind of pool of, 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 of problems that you can model, okay? So uh, the more math you know, the sort of the, uh, the, the broader the, the coverage of your, you know, expertise can be um, in terms of math modeling, okay? So I'm not saying anything uh, fancy here. I'm just uh, pointing, you know, sort of, if you have a, if you have an interest in a certain direction or a certain you know maybe you work in some company or maybe you will work in some company, uh, I'd like to hear about it, okay? And I'll be happy to you know um, look at other references, you know other things. You might be doing a project, you know even if you're not a grad student. Uh, and it all I want is that you have a rewarding experience. At the end of the day is uh, you, you, you finish this course not because you had to take it, but um, because you, you really, you know, um, fit your interests. Okay? So, there are three, uh, three main kind of um, motives that we're going to be um, touching in this course. So, Sorry for my handwriting, but it's going to get better, hopefully. Um, so the first kind of big uh, pool of problems are going to be label optimization problems because, well, because they're, they're uh, in practice, you end up uh, with many of the questions that uh, where you want to optimize some, you want to maximize some profit, you want to minimize some cost. Um, you know, the things going on um, in different fields. In all the fields, you can actually set up a problem where you need to, you can set it up so it's an optimization problem. Um, so we'll start with those, and that's going to, uh, you know, uh, lead us to a lot of the applications. Um, then we're going to talk about dynamical systems models problems and as a subset sort of of those uh, we're going to be talking about control problems um, and sort of the Last one, sorry for the, it's actually here. Uh, the last kind of class would be uh, probability models. Now, um, if we had all the time in the world, then we would really go into details in all of them. Um, 
I will probably talk least about, I mean, spend least amount of time on the probability models um, simply because, you know, you can spend a whole course on those. There's a, of course, uh, we offer another course, so casting model modeling that uh, really, you know, um, discusses those. But we'll, we'll talk about some of these. Okay, so. And by the way, I should say, uh, I like when the class is very quiet, but if you, if you really have, you know, if you have any questions, just don't, don't, uh, uh, don't be shy. Just interrupt and um, ask, because, uh, you know, um, I mean, then that's, that's pretty much how you learn. You, I mean, being active, not, not uh, just passively listening to somebody talk about um, would be ideal if you all had computers or if we were in a computer lab, but, um, you know, that is not the main, th you know, as I said, that's not everything that uh, we'll do. So there will be some pa uh, paper and pencil part in each of the problems. So let me talk about optimization a little bit. Um, start talking about uh, what is optimization. Well. In one dimensions, so what do I mean by one dimensions? Basically, I mean that I'm looking at a function, you know, some variable that depends on another variable, right? Just one. One variable, um, you know, real numbers x and I have a function that depends on that on that on that x um, and what I want is I want to maximize that right I want to find the maximum so this is y equals f of x okay then you graph it and you uh, look at it and say oh I see a maximum that's the maximum right well Sort of, uh, practic in, in practice, what do you, you know, typically what you do is you have, you know, you don't just have a function. I mean, that's not the starting point, right? The first, the first part of the problem is find the function that, you know, has an expression that you can deal with, right? Well, graphing may not be uh, too difficult once you have that function, right? But graphing is not... Uh, the end of it, because you may have a maximum that you don't really see on a graph, right? It could be, the scale could be so huge that you may, you know, you may not see a maximum, or you may, be, you may see lots of maxima and so forth. So, of course, theoretically on paper, what do you do? Take the derivative. And the first thing is see the critical points, right? So you, you set the derivative equal to zero, and then hopefully, you, then you can decide. You know, is it maximum? Is it minimum? Is it inflection? Is it uh, neither, or so forth, right? So that's calculus one. But in reality, coming, you know, problems coming from or functions coming from. Model for models for mathematical models of a, of a of a realistic problem is taking the derivative may be impossible, right? Let's say you're lucky that you have a function that you can just write down very symbolically. Then okay, maybe you can take the derivative. The next hurdle is setting you know finding the solution of f prime equals zero, right? That's not uh, always possible to explicitly, right? So you, need, you really need a computer for every single step of this, and you have to deal with these situations uh, where you may not get the, an exact answer for each, right? So um, you probably now, I mean, you know that even if if you have some I don't know, some function like this, I, I don't know if this is a maximum or not, but um, 
I don't know, let me put a minus here or something, then the derivative, so this is in the case where you have the function, you can take the derivative by hand, but now you are facing the task of setting this equal to zero, right? And uh, what do you do? You need a calculator, right? Okay, so you can do this with a graphing calculator. No, 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 no big deal. Um, but because of the uh, sort of the nature of the things, it's probably better now to use one of these computer algebra systems. So I will show you uh, very, very briefly how to uh, solve this in MATLAB, and then we're going to move to a baby problem that actually you have to start from the very beginning to even say what x is, what is f, and so forth, right? So to set up a model. So we're going to set up a model. Um, let me just open MATLAB since I've talked so much about it. Uh, show you really quick how to use this, to use it to solve this. Um, uh, now I do have it locally on my machine. Um, but if I had to, if I don't have it on my local machine, I can um, remote desktop to what's called uh, RATS, R-A-T-S dot E-S dot U-C-C-S dot E-D-U, and use your UFP. you know, uh, credentials, and, and what, what you do is you just go on this remote, remote machine that you have access to lots of uh, software, not just MATLAB, lots of software, okay? Uh, I don't know how long it's going to take, but um, anyway, so I have access to, uh, I get MATLAB, and I've never seen it before, um, and what you're probably going to see in First time you open it is kind of cluttered, have all this kind of stuff, right? Um, so for the most part, I'm not going to be using the folder. I'm not going to be using the command history. Let me leave this what's called a workspace. So I have these two windows, which I can play with. Um, I have some garbage there. I'm just going to clear it. CLC clears it. Okay, so this is how you start fresh. Okay. So, I simply want to solve that um, optimization problem, right? Okay, so how do I do? Well, many ways you can do it. But the one way I, I want to, uh, you know, want to start with is, is do it symbolically, okay? Remember, that's not the strength of MATLAB, okay? But it's, it's convenient that, that it has this uh, capability. Uh, and by the way, if those of you that have used RATS before to connect remotely, uh, now even remotely you can do symbolic computations. Uh, in the past you were not able to do it because of, I don't know, 64-bit compatibility and so forth. But anyway, so right now everything that I show you, you can do it remotely as well. Okay, so the first thing that I do is, and this is kind of unusual for MATLAB, to have to define that I'm going to work with X, okay? But again, we're, 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 we're living in this symbolic, you know, we're working with the symbolic objects. So, I mean, that's the, pri the price, price of prey. We just have to define. We have to say, we're going to work with X, okay? All right? The next thing is I'm going to define the function, okay? And um, you can see it. I mean, it's obvious, right? The way you define is just equal, okay? It's not like other software. Uh, it's just simply equal, okay? Now, this is a command window, and it's, it's MATLAB is just waiting for your next command, okay? Yeah? Uh, do you want 2x to x Is that what it was? Yeah. X square is the derivative. Yeah, yeah. Um, right, so when I take the derivative, it's going to be 2x, let's see. Okay. Um, all right, now, 
let me clear this. I'm going to start fresh again. I mean, it's, I, I'm not really starting fresh. If you look in the workspace, you can see those two objects are already defined there, right? So x and f, um, and there one. There's also the va uh, well. They're symbolic, right? So that's what it says. It's symbolic, and it's a one by one. So the big thing you have to know about MATLAB is MATLAB thinks of everything, every thing that it works with as a matrix. So if it's just a one thing, it's a, I mean, if it's just a one scalar or not one number or one object, well, object is wrong, uh, it's just a one by one, right? So number three would be a thought as a matrix, but a one by one matrix, right? So here it's a one by one symbolic. So you can see you can make a two by two matrix with each entry a symbolic object. Symbolic variable. Okay, but anyway, so, so, so I've defined x. I didn't have to do it again, but I'm just showing. And the next thing I'm doing is a semicolon, meaning it 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 goes through that command, but it doesn't display something out, uh, as a result. Okay, just to keep it kind of short. Okay, so that's that's f. What's the next thing to do? You can differentiate. You know, and there's going to be commands that you probably don't know if you haven't uh, worked with with MATLAB. Uh, and the best way to do it is, well, I want to say most of all the commands, well, all the commands. I want to say all, but probably it's not true. All the commands that you will ever need in this course, you you will have seen prior to to you having to work on the problem. But um, if you ever kind of need um, something, you can always go to help. In fact, this FX here has uh, a list of all the functions categorized. So you can, I don't know, probably mathematics. Um, actually, yeah, you can go mathematics or you can go to, um, one thing I should say here is, is one peculiar feature of MATLAB is it, it has a core set of functions, and then it has functions that are very specialized for, let's say, control systems or image processing, right? So each of these has very specialized set of functions. Now, the one where you have symbolic capability is called symbolic math toolbox. So if you don't have this listed, you cannot do symbolic computations, and you would get an error when you type S Y M S. Okay? So we should be able to get to all those through wraps? Yes, now. Okay. Which is a big. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, um, I don't want to go through much of this. I just want to uh, show you, you know, how it works. And so you can find things like that there. It does display the answer, right? Um, symbolically, right? And if you ask me how it did, I don't know. It's just magic, right? Just took a Calc 1. This computer took a Calc 1 class. Um, remember, you recall, right, when you learn about derivatives, you just know the rules, right? So I imagine there was, these rules were kind of embedded in this. But anyway. Um, but notice that, that I, have, I have a new variable called ANS, which I didn't call it that way, right? So one thing that you can always do just to make sure that um, you, you know, you keep track of what you've computed is just to call it somehow, right? So I call it dfdx, but you can call it whatever, right? You can give it a name, right? You can fx or I don't know. Let's call it fx. Okay. So now it has created the fx and it kept it there, right? Um, and it's this function. It's still up. It's this symbolic. Well, okay. So we were wondering. How do you, I keep deleting so you don't have to scroll, I, mean, well, I, I guess you can do it. You can uh, see on the bottom there too. Um, but anyway, everything's still there, right? I haven't, it's, I just cleared the screen here, but um, so let me plot this function, easy plot fx. Okay, so I'm just showing you the real basic 
basic commands. Um, sorry if you're familiar with this. But, all right, so now, now you see it. Okay? But, but it's hard, right? It's hard to say if you have a minimum or a maximum, right? Well, it's not hard to see. I mean, in this, by the way, why negative 6 to 6? Well, easy plot uses negative 2 pi to 2 pi by default. So it's 6.28, right? But you don't, you, don't, you don't really want that. Now, here's one thing that's going to happen. You see this window here that can pop up here? Now, if I want to go and do something else, the window disappears. Okay. It's kind of frustrating. Uh, okay. Don't spend hours to find that. Okay. Just listen to me here um, to find that figure. Right. Um, so, where do you go? Well, it didn't go anywhere. It's just somewhere here. Okay, and this is Windows 7, which is a great thing, uh, that I can find it, right? But I, you know, I didn't have to wait for Windows 7 to show up um, to find this figure. What I can do is I can actually, what, what we call dock, right? So I can dock this, so I still have everything on you know, full screen, and I just want to keep it, right? So I've docked it. Dock is, is this thing here. I want every every single window to be on the same screen. Okay, so okay, so hopefully everything is going to stay there. And now, uh, let's say our x is only positive, zero to I don't know. You see, six is kind of big, right? Let's do four. Now, if you put instead of square parentheses, if you put uh, you know just parentheses, I think it's going to give an error. So there's going to be stuff that you're going to be frustrated initially. Okay. What do I do, you know? Don't spend too much time on this. Just just kind of look at the help or whatever, right? Gosh. So hard to see. Do I have a minimum? Well, I have to go. Well, I can see that between 0 and 1, is, if there is a minimum, that's going to be the minimum, right? Hey, and there's the minimum, right? I have to say I'm very lucky because I just picked that at random. But um, Okay, so, the, you know, it's a big, it's a big issue here. Uh, how do you get to the thing that you want to uh, conclude, right? Well, plotting has a lot of limitations, okay? Because you don't know what the window size should be and so forth, okay? And this is an easy example. We're, we're doing the Calc 1 stuff. Okay. So, so we have not a maximum, but a minimum. Okay. So, well. Oh, 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 thank you so much. We're dealing with the derivative. Huh. I'm not plotting. Yeah, I'm plotting the derivative. Thanks. Maybe I should have looked at. Well, okay. That, so I'm not so lucky then. Let's go back. Okay. Um, all right. So what should I do? Now let, me, let me go back to zero one here, right? Well, so I'm not looking at a maximum, thank you. But I'm looking at what? zeros of this function. All right. Okay, so the zero of this function is, doesn't look like it's in this interval, right? Doesn't look, but there, it looks like there is somewhere. That's the other thing. You should keep uh, things into perspective, right? What you, don't change the problem. <laughs> I, I've changed the problem, right? I was looking at, uh, I was looking at the, uh, other things, right? I'm looking at the, uh, maximum or minimum of the function. So I'm looking at zeros as a derivative. Okay, so, well, being a cubic function, I know there is a zero, right? Okay, so that wasn't random, but 
where the zero is is still not very clear, right? So I have to ask the computer how to. Okay, so I have to solve. fx equals zero. And what do you know about cubic functions? You, they're difficult to solve. It's not impossible, but you're going to get cubic roots, all kinds of stuff. There are some formulas, but you don't even want to know. I see some complex numbers here. So in fact, it's a big mess. In fact, you look at the answer. I didn't call it anything. You see it's 3 by 1. So I have three solutions, right? It found all three solutions, but are not all real, right? So it found one and two complex. Where are those complex roots? On the graph. They're, 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 there's, no, there's only one x-intersect, right, of f prime with the x-axis, right? See, it's not easy. Um, well, OK. But first of all, let's, let me give it a name here, x crit. I don't know, x. This is, this is the, uh, believe it or not, this, is, this becomes challenging. How do you, how should you, uh, should, should you call something? x uh, crit, take all, whatever, OK? All right, well, now at least I don't have that ANS, but I have this. Uh, it's too long. I should have called something small, uh, shorter. But anyway, um, now here's where, where MATLAB comes into, uh, into uh, comes in handy, is you can actually, of course, see the same, but in, in, in a better way, right? Not, not symbolically. This is almost like, it's a symbolic. Yes. You could almost see the square roots or something, right? I think you can, you, well, you don't see them here, but you can, well, OK. Well, I just want to see the solutions. So I use this double command, double, and it converts. You see the answer now? It's, 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 a, it's a something you can uh, visualize, right? Negative, almost negative 1, but not quite. Um, this double command, does anybody know what it does? Hmm? Yeah, but not just that. Right, double precision. But the one thing that everybody has to understand is we were doing our computation in the symbolic world, right? Double brings it into the numerical world, OK? It's a big, OK, so now it's like a, it's a huge change, OK? It may not show like this, but it is, now it's a, now it's a, it's a, it's a number that MATLAB is really happy to work with, OK? These numbers, complex numbers, are, are MATLAB is very uh, have, uh, com comfortable with, OK? All right, so. Um, what else should I say? Of course, uh, I, I didn't give any name to this, so I should, I should call it somehow, right? I don't know. You can, you can even call it the same thing as long as you didn't, well, right? You can call it, if I use this name, right? I, I made a conversion, but it's, it just changed that nature of the, yeah. Right. So if if yeah. So um, that's a computer science question, and I only know a little. But I know that the variables that are stored, so the things that are in this workspace, have some memory allocated, right? And 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 as long as the size of that variable doesn't increase, uh, it just uses the same memory uh, allocation. Sometimes. What you know, will happen is that we will increase the size of, you know, we could call the same variable but increase its size. Then it becomes, there are some flags that show up that say it's not very optimal. Anyway, so optimizing the uh, memory usage and so forth is, a, is, a, is an interesting thing. But 
not really mathematical. Um, okay, so final thing. Remember, I told you that that MATLAB comes has this uh, everything, everything MATLAB deals with is a matrix. Okay, so this this thing now is a matrix. It's a three by one matrix, right? But you don't care about those two last two ones, right? So you can just extract only the one you need. So that's uh, let me change. Well, let me change the name. And you extract it by saying, uh, by putting this in parentheses, is, is, is a one, you know, the first entry in that matrix, right? Uh, well, the matrix is three by one, so it's clear what the first entry is that, right? If it were a two by two matrix, you would better say it's a first row, first column, right? But here it doesn't make any difference, right? So, so you've and it, give it a different name. Of course, you could. Doesn't matter. Names is is something. Uh, you you have lots of choices, right? So you can, if if you are if if this is a little bit confusing to you, always give it a, a, a new name. Okay. All right. Anyway, so f that's the answer. Well. Okay, that's the uh, max or minimum. We still don't know if it's a max or minimum, right? Uh, the derivative was negative and then positive, so the uh, function was decreasing and then increasing, so it is a minimum for the function f. And you can see it if you plot f, not fx, and you minus 1, 1, let's say. So it's right here, right? Right on here. Right? Okay. Um, all right. So, thanks again for pointing that out. I mean, it, it is important, right? And 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 if you do this in your homework, <laughs> I'll say you know, uh, don't do it. So don't. Uh, I'll say it now. Don't. Uh, be, you know, every every time you have to keep things in perspective. The one thing that the modeling helps is actually uh, when you get to the end of your th of your computation, of your model, of your solving the model, of your using the computer to solve the model. You have to translate everything into words and say, you know, again, tell your brother or sister, mother or father, uh, somebody that has you know scared of math say what you've found, okay? And that, that's, a, that's a check that, that helps you catch, hopefully, most of this, you know, possible errors that are done in the process. Okay? Uh, let's, um, well, let me say two more things before I close this, is this way of, of doing business with MATLAB is not efficient because it asks, is a sequential, it asks for a command at a time, right? And yes, you can go back and recall a command, but that's not very efficient. Most efficient is to use what's called a script. Okay? And notice that I've, I've opened what's called an editor. And in this editor, you can actually, and now it's gone, right? Where'd it go? Windows 7 is good. Uh, I found it, so now before I lose it again, I'm going to dock it. Now, it went above the figure. I, I don't really like that. I want that to be like a... You know, window here, right? And you can play with this. Okay? And if I, um, let's say I want to redo the, everything that I've done. Uh, but now in one stroke. So what I do is I go to the, well, I go to the command wind, uh, history just because I'm lazy to rewrite everything. Wait. Ah, okay. Um, I think I needed to do something else. 
um, to record this as a diary. But since I haven't done it, let me um, let me just say the following: that you can. Oh, that's another thing. You can click this little thing here. So this is not undocking. Well, this is undocking, right? This just takes it as a separate window, which you may lose again. So instead of undocking, you can do maximize the error. So it just kind of goes on top of everything else, but it's not undocked, right? You can put it back in and find the other. Okay, so so I just want to focus on this for now. So what did I say f was? x4 minus x squared plus x. fx was different. the derivative of f. By the way, uh, derivative you, you don't have in this case to, to, to say is with respect to x, but uh, some, some other times will be also useful. And last thing is solve xc solve f. No, x, right? fx, right? Remember? Yeah. Um, you know, you may be able to, in the newer versions, um, I don't know the answer. Uh, the, the point is we're not really doing the most efficient coding, okay? We just want to do some coding that gives us the answer. Then we can, we can that's a separate uh, process, right? Optimize, optimizing the, the code itself, right? But I don't know. It's it's possible. A lot of the things that I do are um, either redundant or really slow or something, right? But we're not looking at speed at this point, okay? So, um, so remember we did this. Uh, what was the last thing we did? And the one thing that we didn't do is evaluate f at. at this value, right? And this is going to be f min. Well, it's of course the minimum in whatever interval it is, right? So so now you have this uh, nothing but what's called a text file that you just wrote, right? I, I wrote it fairly quick. Um, how did I know to write all of this? Well, I've kind of went one step and I saw what it does, right? So if if you Right? If the first time you write it, you're not gonna know how to do this. So what you gonna do? Well, I'll tell you. Huh? Practice. I mean, experiment. Okay. So let me just uh, do this. Well, you can run this thing. Uh, if it wasn't saved, it will ask you to save. So let's save it as the first one. Um, it has to be .m to be recognized. Oh, already exists. I don't care. Okay. So now it not only saved, but it also run, but nothing happened. Well, because I wasn't watching the command window. So that was, again, that was just to focus on that. But of course, you can do it here, and it gave the, the value, right? In fact, let me do it again. So I'm going to cl clear this. I'm going to run this. And you see the answer, right? Now, you only see this because everything else was commented out, not commented out, but, but uh, suppressed. The display was suppressed, right? Okay. Of course, you can do and see everything, every single thing, but then it's going to be painful. But uh, Okay, so then you have to kind of scroll up and down, but right? So that's not, and I think you can control Z to undo things. Okay, so it is a text editor, nothing else, okay? Which is, which is good because you're going to go and take my codes, or any codes. So look, I didn't, uh, we we're going to talk about this problem, um, specific problem in class. But um, if you have no idea what it is, but you want to see what it does, uh, you just copy this text, right? There's no special formatting, just text, right? 
and you're going to open a new one, paste it here. Yeah, you can save it and then run it. You know, let's save it pig one. So we're talking about some pigs here, which is kind of funny, but um, that's the first example. And then you run it, right? So and in this, there's a bunch of commands that create uh, all these figures, right? Which I just closed because it's it becomes again it becomes quite cluttered, right? So you don't know what it did. Um, that's why I'm saying. Well, you can see some of these numbers, right? But again, it's a, it's a it's an ugly thing to scroll up and down, right? So when you're done with a code, again, this I'm, I haven't showed you how to develop the code. But if you when you're done with this code, you want to just run it. There are two things to do. One thing is go and do one at a time. See what the code does one at a time. And that's done with this double uh, percentages. So in your code, everything that has this percentage is ignored by MATLAB. So it's just for you to see, right? So with one single percentage. What has two double, perc I mean, double uh, two percentages is what's called a cell. So I don't know if you can see, but it gives a different color. If you're in this cell, this cell is from here to here, right? And you can run it one at a time. And that's done up here, if you can see my cursor. So you can run the cell and stay in that cell. So let me cl clear this so you can see. So if I run this, the first cell, well, it did it, but of course, there's nothing to display. It just defined that variable, right? Therefore, I should go either to next cell or just just this is more more useful, of course. So now I'm in the next cell. Well, take a look at this. I have this new function, which is a function of x, and now I can just evaluate this. And what's going to happen? It's going to plot something which I don't see. Why do I why, why I don't see? Because it's it's. No, but it's hidden here. Uh, actually, you know what? Semicolon for plotting is not doesn't have any effect. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was somewhere in in a figure that in a in a place where I couldn't see it, right? But it did it it did it did something, right? So this is the function that you have to maximize, right? Forget what it comes. It comes from a maximization problem of profit. But now I can I can go forward and see. Well, the next thing is. Find the maximum, uh, find the derivative, but you don't show me the derivative, right? Of course, you can see, but it will be ugly. Um, the next thing is solve max uh, the derivative equal to zero, and you see I doubled. I immediately I want to uh, get it in the numeric format. Compute the maximum. Of, uh, well, x max was found that I showed, um, and now you can see what happens. I'm sorry if you, this is too small, but it found a maximum. It even plotted. It's kind of nice visually. OK, and then it goes into other things, which we'll have to talk about theoretically. OK? All right? And last thing is when you're done with this code, what do you do with it? OK, you cannot. So this is one way to kind of see what it does step by step. Of course, uh, it, it's also useful for debugging. Like, if something's not right, you can go in that cell and modify what you need. When everything's working nice and fine, you can publish this. So this is another uh, feature which is very useful. It just gives you a report of everything. And first, it, it goes through the, you know, the computation and you have an HTML file which is already on your computer that is nice nicely organized of course the formatting we should worry about this later the, the important thing is everything there is text which is comments 
there is commands, which are MATLAB commands, and there is output, which is graphs and values. Okay. So, so you don't have to look and, and scroll up and down and, and look in different. Okay. This thing you print and give it to me, but of course. Okay. So Monday we're going to talk about uh, how we start, uh, you know, with simple models and get to a code like this and then interpret. Thank you.